now to hear from a, another member of the, the organization, in fact, the founder of the organization, who will uh, take us a bit back in terms of bridging Web 2 and Web 3 for the private and public sectors in the continent. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome John Kamara, who is the founder of Adanian Labs, and also uh, Fya Ricard, and chairman of the African Blockchain Center. So, John, um, thanks so much for your patience also. Okay, so uh, I do have a presentation, uh, this presentation, and I will share it with you. It's about Web 2 and Web 3. But um, while on my way to Joburg, um, I saw my friend something happened. I kind of rethought what I was going to talk about to you. But I will still share this presentation because it's also important. But for the next five minutes, I will talk about continental inertia. Continental inertia. We understand the meaning of the word inertia, right? Everyone has thanks the meaning of the word inertia. As a continent, um, he'll allow me, uh, Deepak Bagler, who is the director of Invest India, and I listened to him talk last week, about two weeks ago, and I still can't get it out of my mind how a, cont a country like India in 20 years has completely reformed itself via technology. It's not about blockchain or Web3, but first of all, the inertia of Africa to consistently be a consumption economy, even when it comes to technology. And, and when you think about you know, what this has done for India to turn just one country, just the same size of us, almost one point something billion people, to the fourth largest GDP in the world. Fourth largest GDP. So if I take you back for a second, we're the oldest civilization in the world. We truly are the oldest civilization in the world. And at the same time, we have the youngest population but we don't produce anything. We consume everything. Everything that everyone brings to us, we consume. But before we consume, we're consistently in a state of inertia for us. We think too much. So, and when you think about technology, when you think about something like blockchain, connecting both together, you find that this inertia means that even in the blockchain world, we don't own anything. We use USDT more than anyone else. We use cryptocurrencies more than anyone else, but we don't literally own one viable product in that space. So that means we contribute over half of the value of the industry, but we don't own anything. How is that possible? I'm distressed. How is that possible? That we, we sit here, we gather these conferences, we talk about it all the time. And I want to really understand the journey of industrialization. You have to think about how the evolution has happened. We, we have a huntsman, we're hunters. And then we move from hunters to agrarian industrialization. Then we move to infrastructure. And now we move to technology and services. And places like India and Asia, have basically taken over the service industry by doing one thing, building high value human capital. We have human capital, we have a lot of people, but we have weak value human capital. High value human capital. So which is why if I ask you a question, how many blockchain protocols are there in the world? Anybody knows? How many blockchain protocols are in the world right now? How many are from Africa that make any sense that you've ever used? I could lay one protocol that is truly from Africa with a token project that makes sense that is from this continent. It's a simple question. 
Well, yeah, I mean, we're very intelligent. We, we work in this industry. We're nonstop. We're pouring money into it, and we know that it can solve our problem. But the interesting thing about the blockchain space, again, when you think about continental inertia, is that we actually have real problems. We have real problems that blockchain can actually solve. And if you look in some of the slides that I'll tell you, I will move on from it too quickly. You will get the slides. But we have real problems that blockchain can solve. And those problems go from governance, corruption, right? And I'm also, I'm not here to talk about crypto, excuse me, but I'm talking about, we have problems with agriculture. We have problems with procurement processes. We have problems in verifiable credentials of education of people. These are real problems that Brockgate can solve. If we solve payment problems in Africa, I was just asking my friend, will they change the continent? He told me probably only change 20% of the continent. Poverty will still be there. Even if we can pay the little woman in Ethiopia, it doesn't mean our continent will change at all. People will still be poor. But if we can change the shape of agriculture because we use the technology, and we're able to help a farmer transact better and get more money. If we can change the mining industry, if we can change the energy industry, if we can do better, less counterfeit in FMCGs, because we can, in healthcare, these are all use cases where our corporate organizations and governments can actually start thinking about the technology itself. We've gone so far away from the technology that we just talk about the outcome, which is the currency. The technology, and even if you take the currency, for example, the use of USDT last year and this year, the impact of the colossal damage in the global financial market, we are hit the most. A lot of us have lost our money because it's there, right? I've lost money, it's there. There's nothing I can do because I don't own anything. I own zero. So it's not a moment where we start thinking to ourselves, how do we actually build and own some of this technology? In India, you've gone from an economy where people were dependent and reliant on everybody else to an economy where they provide for everybody else. They have way more blockchain developers in India than the whole of Africa put together. The whole of Africa put together, you have more blockchain developers in India. The value of one blockchain developer, you know how much they get paid from a foreign direct investment perspective, from an FDI perspective. So, which means that they can actually help the corporate companies build solutions that actually help them. They think for the solution of their own countries. We're Web2, you know, we're still a Web2 dominated institution. And Web3 is extremely important for us, but how are we connecting that gap? How are we bridging that gap from Web 2 to Web 3? Vietnam has more blockchain developers than the whole of Africa put together. Vietnam. So our corporate... So when you truly start talking about, yes, we consume. Consumption is not the same thing as adoption. I consume doesn't mean that I know anything about what I'm actually consuming. I just consume it for relevance and for use. So everybody who comes to sell it to me will sell it to me because I will consume it nonstop. That's it. We consume, we consume, we consume, but we live in a continent where half of the, 70% of the people are young, they're smart, they're intelligent, but we're not investing in the technology to own our own layer one protocols. Our corporate organizations are not investing in blockchain because they don't see any value in it. Our central governments, I just went to a few of the central banks of a few countries, do not understand what we're talking about. But the value of the product is so important here. Way more important. Healthcare, healthcare in Africa is dysfunctional because we can't even verify data of anyone. What about we use blockchain in healthcare? In South Africa, in Kenya, in Nigeria. What about we actually, when a student goes to university, you actually can't verify that they actually came out of that university. How about we actually do verifiable credentials for education so you can actually verify the real value of that individual? 
it's it's the the whole economy of tokenizing everything. I really don't buy it. I don't buy tokenizing every little thing. And there's so many blockchain platforms that will come to you. Which one? Which one is the best? But the technology is extremely, extremely important for Africa. More than any other continent. That's the only one thing that I've had that made sense. The technology, it can help us with FDI because we can actually service the world by creating blockchain developers. We can create solutions that actually serve our economy. We can actually build protocols where we actually warehouse stored values in it. And for us to bring these Web2 players that we're talking about, we're not, we sit in this room, the decision makers do not understand what we're talking about. So we live in a parallel universe. And to connect that universe, we're going to have to do things differently. So, um, like I said, I will leave you with this presentation because I think you can see some of the com uh, use cases for blockchain, but none of them is African. None. And I researched so much. Like real use cases that corporate organizations use. Even use cases that governments use. Just to get our governments to do land projects on blockchain is a nightmare in so many countries. It's, it's a no-brainer, but the corruption level just makes it impossible. So how do we first deal with governance issues? So, and I use it India as an example because she must go listen to Deepak Bagla the past few weeks. I haven't slept since I've listened to him. How a continent has changed a country in 20 years. So I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of blockchain. I believe this technology is extremely important. And I think Web2, if we don't get the Web2 industry involved in this blockchain, yes, we might move ahead of them and some people will make money. Yes, absolutely. But the rest of the continent will still be where it's at. What if we train 50, 100 blockchain developers in Mali? You know how much money Mali would actually make? So I challenge all the we have three companies. Why not by investing in actually training developers in Africa than selling us tokens? How about how many Web3 companies actually have any development center with enough people in this continent? Well, we consume everything that you sell us. How many of them actually go to our government to actually talk about or even connect with our private sector? So the job is on us. And today, for me, I, I did really prepare this presentation for you. But I think this is more important for me than, and please share the presentation with everybody about all the great things that happened. The value of Africa last year alone in transaction was over $38 billion. The same way I went to the AI for Leaders Conference in Cannes, the value of the machine industry was $9 trillion last year. There's like 0.1% in Africa. The value of the blockchain industry, because the stored value is housed by the owner of the protocol. Not you, not me. So how about we start building our own protocols and support you? How about those protocols also support us to build that infrastructure layer that we need. I would like you to think just a little bit differently for a second. The young kids who are coming up who are doing great stuff in blockchain, all and and the disconnect is that we have all these great projects that are happening, but they have no real impact on everyday life of people. They they don't. Apart from just payment transactions, that's it. They don't but it has the capacity to, it does, but it doesn't. So Web2 to Web3, I do totally believe that blockchain and Web2, Web3 could be the future change of our continent, but I do believe that we have to think about it from an ownership perspective. Thank you very much. Yeah.